Hello, and welcome to Triple E CP64 Intro to Logic Design Parts Kit video. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the parts that are in your parts kit, as well as some of the key characteristics, and give a brief, uh, brief summary of each of the parts. So here's a list of your parts um, list. So you can see here we have some 74,000 logic gates, as well as some a Smith trigger, a three-state buffer, a seven-second display, an LED bar graph, a dip switch, some resistors, some wire, breadboard, some push buttons, a multimeter, a pair of pliers, wire stripper, and some test leads. So the first key characteristic that we look at some of the parts is the packaging. And packaging is basically a way that we mount an IC onto a board or to other components. So here, the main ones we're going to use is DIP, which is dual unwind package, and SIP, or single unwind package. Key thing to know about some of the packaging is if it has a pin or a pad. So a lot of times pads, like you can see here, are going to be used for surface mounted, whereas pins are going to be used in what we call through hole. So a lot of times like breadboards or if you have through hole soldering or what we call perf boards is another term. So, but for the breadboards, since we're using those for this lab, we're going to be using a lot of dip and sip packaged um, components. The other key thing to know is about bust or isolated components. So this is how they're wired up internally. So here we can see you have an example of resistors. And as the top right, this is what we call a bust resistor. And basically all these individual resistors are connected by one pin or one set of wires onto one side. And we'll go over how to know which pin this is later. Isolated is where each component, or in this case resistor, is isolated from each individual one. So if this something happens to this resistor, it's not gonna generally affect this one necessarily. So. <clears throat> Our first set of components we're going to talk about is our 7400 ICs. And these are usually our logic gates. So you can see here we have our NAND, our inverter, which we're going to call a NOT, and we also have our SMIT trigger, which will be a component we might use later for what we call debouncing, an OR logic, as well as a quad three state buffer. So in this package, I have a schematic below. This is what we refer to as quad. So you can see here there's four gates. We also have what's called a hex or has six. One of the key characteristics of these um, ICs is this notch. So if you look here at this notch, we can relatively tell which pin is what in the sense if I look here, I look up to the top left, this is pin 14, which is usually the VCC or we're going to provide power. And to the bottom right of that will be where we provide ground. Now it's important to look up these schematics and look it up for your individual ICs so you understand what is the inputs and outputs for this logic. So you can see here pin 13 and 12 will be our input and pin 11 will be driving our output. And each one of these might be different depending on the gate. So it's very important to look it up. And you'll actually do this in the first lab. Uh, I believe it's lab one, part one, or part two. Our next component is the LED bar graph. So this is actually an isolated component. So each of these LEDs are in, not connected together. They're basically individual through cross. So when we look at this, this is, even though it's isolated, it's also we have what we call a dip packaging. So there's two rows of pins across. So when you look at this first pin, it's gonna be directly connected to the pin straight across from this. The other thing to know for the LED bar graph is that it is po has polarity and that the side with the notch actually has is our anode side or our positive side. So when we wire it up, it's important to know how we wire up our LED. So when you wire it, say you have your GPIO or your, um, your output of your um, logic gate from your 7400 series IC, you're going to drive that into the anode side or the side with the notch. And then from the other side, you might use, you'll use 330 ohm resistors and then wire that into a ground. So remember, it's important to know which side you connect to onto this LED bar graph. The next component is the dip switch. So basically it's just a dual inline package switch and the same as uh, the previous component for the LED bar graph, it's isolated. So you can see here that each pin will be connected across to the other one. So just keep that in mind that whatever this switch is doing, it's not gonna affect any of these other ones. The resistor single in packages. So most of the kits should have a bust um, resistor pack, but if they have isolated, that's fine as well. Just keep in mind how we wire it on the breadboard might be a little bit different. So for the bus, the key thing to note what this common pin is, is going to be a marking, which is this dot. So as you can see here, there's a dot on each of these resistor pack packs. Now, to tell which one is what, we can a lot of times just look at the symbols and see 331 would be our 330 ohm resistor. And it's hard to tell in this video or this image, but you can see 1002. This would be our 1k ohm resistor. But just to make sure that we have the correct ones, you can always measure it with your multimeter. And how we do that is you'll take one, uh, one lead from your multimeter, make sure it's on the resistor setting, and you connect it to any of these one pins across here. Then from there, take the other lead and connect it to the pin that has that marking, or this one. 
and you should be able to see what resistance is actually on this resistor pack. The next component is the breadboard. So the breadboard is really commonly used for prototyping. It's great for taking and removing components without having to use solder. Once we use solder, we can damage components, but they're going to adhere a lot better. But breadboards are fantastic because we can wire up, test a component before we even have to touch a uh, solder or have the component touch solder. The next key component is going to be the push button. So there's two kind of characteristics of a push button, either normally opened or normally closed. Normally opened is when the button is not being pressed, the switch is open. When normally closed is when the button is not pressed, the switch is closed. So a good example of this for say normally closed is say you hook up your push button into a circuit with an LED is if I provide power, my LED will turn on if I don't touch my button. The second I press my button down, it'll open my circuit and then my LED should turn off. So remember that is normally closed means that your switch is basically closed or you're, it's like a wire. Whereas normally open is that it's disconnected until the button is pressed. The next component is a seven second display. So this display, one thing to keep in mind, most commonly in your parts kit is that it's bust. So there is a common, we call anode and common cathode. So when you look this up, you want to actually, when you utilize this, this component, you want to look up the, um, these letters and try to find which one it is and basically find out if it's a common anode or cathode. And this will be important later when you do use this component in one of your later parts. The digital multimeter is gonna be used a lot for when you wanna measure voltage and check to see if you're receiving proper power or uh, voltages for your ICs, as well as me measuring the resistance and confirming that you have the correct components. One key thing to remember though when we use this is remember to turn off when you're not using it. It's very easy to waste power and leave it in your parts kit and leave it into the on position. Then when you finally do need it, you pull it out and realize that your multimeter is dead. So just good check to always make sure that this is turned off when it's not being used. The other key, uh, one of the tools that you have in your parts kit is the long nose plier. So this is great when we remove and place components, especially since a lot of the breadboards when you first receive them are new and they're a little tight when you remove a component and put it into place. This is, makes it a little easier using pliers so you don't damage the pins. Wire strippers, well, this will be great for when you strip wires and, well, at least strip wires. I don't know what I'll say for those. Test leads. So test leads are great for when we use alligator. They're basically connecting components and holding them into place more securely. So they use alligator clips. You basically clip them onto your, say, your multimeter leads, and you can hook them up to the end of a end other end of a wire and place it into a breadboard and check different measurements. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact us at csusiiee at gmail.com. Uh, we'll have another set of a couple of videos talking a little bit more about the CP Triple E 64 Intro to Logic Design Lab, and hopefully um, this was helpful. If you have any other questions, again, please feel free to contact us and look out for more videos. Thank you.